Hey guys, V here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and connect all of your front panel connectors to your motherboard. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and just go over all my tips and tricks and why I use the uh, manual, the motherboard manual to help me do this. Uh, since every motherboard is different, I can't say that this will work perfectly for every single build, but this should help you get a good idea of how to do this properly. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take out the motherboard and set it down so I can record this a little bit better for you to see. And I'm gonna just go step by step and show you the whole process. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and take the motherboard out just so I can record this a little bit better so you can see better. But just to show you where these things are, typically, they are right there, somewhere along the bottom. On this motherboard, it's right over here. And here's the cables. As you can see, it just says like power LED and stuff like that. So that's where that goes. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing I like to do is get the motherboard's manual. And the reason I like to do this is because it makes it a whole lot easier. I already know where the front panel connector is, but you can take a look at the graph in the uh, manual and somewhere it should say something like front panel connector or something like that so let's go ahead and take a look and see if we can find it and this motherboard it's number 21 system panel header and if we look 21 is right at the bottom there so we can see it's right there and then once you find that you keep going through the book and you can find the actual system panel header diagram, which is exactly what we like to do, what I like to do. So there we go, it's right there, and we know it's right there on the motherboard. So now, what you can do is compare the two. That's the exact layout. Usually in the book, it'll show it from top to bottom based on how it is on the actual motherboard. So this is the top, this is the bottom. That's the top, that's the bottom. So now, when you look in here, and again, I'm sorry if it's out of focus, I'm not really sure if it is or not, but we can see the first two are PLED plus, PLED minus. So if we look at our connectors right here, we can see power LED plus and minus. And basically, they will go at the two top ones. Plus goes first, minus goes second. Then if we keep looking, we'll see uh, power button ground, which is usually the power buttons ground. And usually these are called power switch or power SW. So that means power LED or P LED is these first two. And then the power button is the next two. So the power switch, some do not have a plus or a minus symbol. And as you saw in the book, it uh, shows you which one's the plus and which one's ground, right? So sometimes if you flip it over, this is really small, so I don't, I'm not really sure if you'll see this, but there's a little tiny arrow right here. That arrow usually indicates that that is the, the power one, right? Not the ground, but the positive. So we're gonna connect this, which means if we flip it over like this, it'll go right here because it went PLED plus, PLED minus, power button positive, and then ground. So the arrow goes on the positive power button. Then with the reset switch, we know it's the last two here, and it said the second last pin right at the corner, but the second last one, so the corner one is ground, and then the one right next to it is the positive. And again, if you look at this, there is a little arrow here, which indicates that is the positive. So what we need to do is align the positive with the second last one. That's gonna go right in there. So there you have it. It's fully connected now. Don't worry if you don't get these right right away. There isn't electricity really running through the power button or the reset switch. I'm not sure about the power LED, but then again, the LED does need to light up so it gets power from somewhere. That's why those are marked specifically plus and minus versus the power switch and the reset switch. 
all they are is a signal. It sends a signal from the case to the motherboard to turn on. So don't worry too much, but if one of those two buttons doesn't work, always check these first. You might have to take it out, flip it over and reconnect it just like that. So that's that. Now, if you have any questions, I don't know the answer to everything, but it does not hurt to ask. Comment down below your questions and I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope it was helpful in any way. If it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is V. Peace.